Brian is right to say that arts is one of the biggest forms of communication for any message that you want to send out to anybody in any part of the world. And it is true because this morning we continue on with Morning at NTV Friday's edition with a look at arts and how arts is actually transforming the message gaps that are found in some of the hardest conversations to have, especially in Africa, more so in Uganda. Now, in regards to fertility, You've had campaigns, you've had conversations, maybe on TV and radio, but having a fertility conversation direct one person to another is the most difficult thing in Ugandan settings. Uh, there's so many married people that are struggling with infertility, be it primary infertility or secondary infertility, uh, but they cannot have the conversations one to another. More so they can't have the conversations with their parents or in-laws for that matter because they will be Therefore, they can't have the conversations with the doctor. So they will go to the doctor with other issues, and then the doctor will possibly diagnose and let them know that perhaps it's infertility that they are struggling with. This morning, I am joined by Sheila Adjok Godwan, also known as Lubanga Kene, to tell us more about infertility and a book that she has wrote. It's called Still a Mom regardless of whether I have a child or not, I'm still a mom. And how this book is actually going to be transitioned into a play that will be staged next month here in Uganda. Good morning to you, Sheila. Good morning. Sheila. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm very good. Yes. So tell me more about Still a Mom, especially in light of your personal story. Okay, um, thank you so much. Uh, thank, thank you for having me. Now, Still a Mom is a book that I authored in um, 2020 this uh, January and um, it focuses based on part of a lived experience in regard to fertility and some challenges that I'd gone through and um, it's a narrative it's told from a point of view of a wife who's been married 15 years and um, they struggle through a childless marriage. So um, coming from that point of view, I wanted to highlight and uh, create awareness on what exactly goes on behind those closed doors for a childless couple for 15 years. And uh, the beauty about it is that I related it to a Ugandan setting. These are conversations that are not talked about. It's kind of hush-hush. It's taboo to talk about uh, the challenges mm -hmm. that uh, a couple is going through. Then um, I also focused so much on the external forces, the, the aspect of the, the in-laws, their in-laws. There are also now um, a lot of probably social media in-laws that will throw out comments about why they are not, why a couple is not having a child. So. It's a very deeply vulnerable book. It's deep. It it's focuses on the, the perception that a woman is supposed to be fertile. Like it's a no-no it's it's no that a man cannot be fertile. So it, uh, it focuses on how this affects the couple as they walk that journey in their marriage. It also focuses on the support on the husband's side. Um, men usually have something called ego. There is that ego factor, even when... Um, they don't usually have. <laughs> they have the thing called E-G-O. Yeah, yeah, even um, in cases where a, a gynecologist will ask you to come in with your husband, that, that is usually a very difficult conversation. Because when I was writing Still a Mom, I carried out a lot of interviews with different people, both men and women and uh, that seemed to be the biggest challenge because when a man hears that a gynecologist has called him in and he would like to do further tests on him they would go like made it made it made it <laughs> yeah it's it's a very very difficult conversation from the interviews that i carried out from my own experience because um i've also had to handle that aspect even in my marriage so and, uh, how, um, how did your husband handle that aspect? it 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 was it was it was even more difficult because ours was a, a case of secondary infertility because we'd already had children and then we were struggling so it's something i asked the guy to actually intervene in <laughs> for him to convince him that it's it's now that both of you that we, we test 
it's both of you that we test. So, and that is actually what's happening in Uganda now. It's no longer a one-sided kind of thing of it's only the woman at fault, but uh, tests and diagnosis is done for all, for both sides, which, which I would really, really like to appreciate. So this book is about creating awareness on fertility. It's about creating awareness on, um, there's something called recurrent miscarriages, because in the book, this woman goes through a number of recurrent miscarriages, and um, and it's it's quite emotive. It's very Speaking emotional. about the it's book, um, looking at the contents here, back to growing up, adulting, struggle, another goal, support systems, lost. Let me get to lost. Uh, on page 41, <laughs> this is how lost this lady is. Um, I think they had uh, just buried someone yeah, in the beginning child. of a different kind of pain for Mark and I the beginning of questions that haunted our dreams at, at night and wouldn't leave us alone during the day these are the questions how could this have happened what caused it what did I do to cause it there must have been one pivotal moment of failure my failure when was it what was it that I could have done and did do these are questions the woman is asking herself tell us more about these kind of questions um, I, I also asked myself those kind of questions. On, uh, with my own journey, with repeat miscarriages, I remember I, I was extremely selfless. Like, you know you're the one carrying this child, and then you lose, you lose the child. There's, there's a lot that goes on in your mind. Like, Did you hit depression at, at some point? Um, I think, but it was, uh, it was not severe. But uh, there is a point where you get into an, an it's called isolation. Mm -hmm. Like you do not think anyone can help you because they have not walked the journey. So it's, it's even hard to explain. I mean, because um, this was, this was a, a, a fetus you were carrying who hadn't, if you hadn't known them, and then you're explaining to somebody about a loss that they, they can't understand. Yeah. They don't know, they didn't know the person. But to you, it was something that you regarded as very special. And Sacred. usually it's, it's in the earlier weeks, you haven't revealed to many people. So even sharing is a, is a challenge. So depression definitely comes through. Okay. No doubt about that. There's another chapter after Lost, Restored. And uh, in this chapter, you write by, you begin by writing, I had a prayer room that we shared in the earlier days where we prayed and fasted. Our biggest prayer request had always been having children. I personally experienced the biggest fear shake up in that room. I learned how to pray with intention and bought books on targeted prayer and so on and so forth. Yes. What does faith have to do with women and men, marriages that are on this challenge in their journey? Um, faith is the biggest comfort, like it's the biggest, um, I would call it, um, support system. God is the biggest support system in all this because despite the number of failures you go through, even in life, I mean, there are so many values that you, you carry through. It's, it's God who has like the biggest support system for you because sometimes it's not necessary to rely on man. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary to rely on man because people will give you all kinds of ideas. In Uganda, they'll even send you to these, they call them, um, I think the healers or something, yeah. traditional healers. They'll say there's a guy either in Chebando, there's a guy I know in Chengeda who is going to give you, is it Ichidomola or something? <laughs> a concoction of sorts. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who has never even studied medicine and he's giving you a weird you know, concoction that could even affect you in the long mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. So sometimes focusing on God and just speaking to probably spiritual spiritual people and spiritual mothers and fathers can help. Then also speaking to people older than you. There, there's that circle of probably an auntie or a parent who, who will reveal to you things that they can that never be revealed to anyone. They'll tell you, I actually went through I know a friend who read that book and he told me his mom took him to their burial grounds in the village and he says they counted about six graves and the mom told him, you know those are your siblings, Ooh. before I had you, I had repeat miscarriages wow. and there were six of them. Wow. 
So, it's a, Cinema is a conversation yeah. center. It's, um, it has an, a me too effect on everybody. Yeah. And I'm glad it's been adapted as a play. Which is going yeah, to be so showcased. let's talk about Cinema Mom, the play <laughs> version, which yeah. is happening next month. Tell us about yes. that. Yes, um, Cinema Mom is going to be acted on the 14th of August, 2022, at the National Theatre Kampala at 2 p.m. It's a Sunday. So, basically, we are creating awareness. I'm excited that um, creatives, <laughs> there's a creative called Alan Odong who read the book, mm -hmm. and he called me up and said, hey, mm -hmm. this can be adapted into a play, and I was excited about it. So I'm glad that this conversation is actually going to theatre. I know some people might not get a chance to read the book, or it's basically a poor reading culture. So... It's even the play version, which is summarized in yeah. just for a few hours, yeah. that definitely sends the message home. Exactly. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, I want to find out from you. How can people purchase tickets? Are they going to be on sale on yes. that day, or? Yes, tickets currently are on sale on uh, Quicket.com. Uh -huh. It's um, it's an online buying platform that uh, you can buy on mobile money, Visa card, mm. or any other kind of method. So, just log on to Quicket.com and buy it all at the theatre on that day. Okay. The ticket is going for 30,000 on crickets and at the gate it will be 40,000. All right. Yeah. And people who want to actually have this continued conversations or even read the book or even have an, a sort of an engagement with you, how would they be able to reach out to you? Oh, they can reach out to me um, on socials, that's Sheila Ajok, or they can call me on 0752 600 604. And there are organizations also in this kind of uh, space called Vessel Is Me. So they can log on to the website and find all the details of Vessel Is Me that supports, offers psychosocial support okay. to couples dealing with these challenges. All right. I know that these challenges come with mental health issues. Yes. So tell us about mental health in regards to infertility and how mm. it can actually be ironed iron out as um, it goes. Yeah, uh, mental health now is, that is now this, the, the medical aspect. Uh, usually most of these fertility hospitals have a mental health expert psychologist who handles these couples, especially the ones who go through loss. And this organization called Vesso Is Me works hand in hand with psychotherapists who walk these couples through um, this kind of thing because it will definitely affect them mentally. Yeah, so there are organizations that okay. offer support. All right, Sheila Ajok, it's a pleasure. Thank and, uh, well, this is a very big conversation. The reality of the matter is that one out of six couples in the world have fertility challenges. And so we are having Sheila, the likes of her book and the play that is coming out on the 14th of August at National Theatre at 2 p.m., channeling these conversations in a way that is better to digest for us to actually address them and perhaps have better families, better marriages, and better futures as the country. Because family is the core of anything especially a nation like uganda chris Genji is somewhere in the afro park hotel um trying to look for that gym chris have you found the gym yet Hello. <laughs> yeah. You found me trying to put down a few aspects of uh, how well you can be in life. And of course, uh, we are coming to you uh, live uh, from uh, Afro Park Hotel here in uh, Muyenga, where it's a bastion of a place. And of course, uh, wellness is one of the critical aspects that uh, this uh, particular Afro Park Hotel gives attention to. And uh, right now, I'm joined uh, by Mr. Baker Bukenya, the head of front office and uh, reservations at uh, Afro Park Hotel, to give us an idea about just how you can be, you can rather adopt a wellness regime that is first and foremost manageable. A uh, very good morning, Mr. Bukenya. Thank you so much. For how are you doing? Hi, how are you? Good. The aspect of wellness within society today is something that is taking center stage. People are beginning to understand that you have to be holistically well in terms of your physique, uh, fitness, but most importantly also your mind. At Afro Park Hotel, tell me about that uh, signature aspect of wellness and how you offer the service. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning viewers. We welcome you to Afro Park Hotel and House Club. We have a full-fledged uh, health club. It includes um, a gym, there is a sauna and steam, mm. swimming, and a fully fledged spa. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very important to maintain our health 
and our gym is always open from 6 p.m. in the morning. So if you would like to work out before you go to the office, we are always mm -hmm. open yeah. morning hours, 6 p.m. up to late 10 p.m. Late 10 p.m. As we were coming in, I saw a lot of uh, fitness enthusiasts in the parking lot, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen who are trying to work out early morning before they can perhaps go uh, to work. Is it okay for somebody to use that very confined space to work out or they need a little bit more uh, expansive space? How, d how does it roll out? Yes, yes, yes. Working out doesn't need a lot of much space mm. and it doesn't need a lot of time. Ah, what is very okay. important is consistency, consistency on the program on you the have programs chosen. That you have chosen. You yeah. may be working out 15, 30 minutes every mm. day, but consistency. Okay. It may be twice a week, yeah. it may be three times in a week, the consistency is very important. It matters. And that is what our trainers keep on advising all our clientele. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. Now, I noticed that uh, the landscape is scenic because uh, over the other side that the camera cannot show. Uh, but of course, later we shall be taking some shots and be able to share, yeah. especially on Morning at 10 TV, so you can see exactly how scenic this place is on top of a hill. Looks like outdoor parties can be some good. Oh yes, uh -huh. we really have a, a very big uh, place for the outdoor garden. Mm. Uh, it can accommodate uh, maximum 500 people. Oh, okay. It is uh, an ideal place. Mm. If you have a lunch, if you have a wedding, if you have a birthday, you're welcome to welcome Afro to Park Hotel. Afro Park Hotel. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you something <laughs> live on national television. Yes. I need, uh, if I, for example, have an outing, say a dinner, Yes. for two. What are the discounts? <laughs> that is a, it's that a hard one, but answer it please because people need to know what discount is there. That is pretty very well. Uh -huh. Our restaurant, as you hear, Afro Park, mm. it is really Afro. Yeah. We have signature dishes and uh, our menu is really very competitive. We range from 25000 up to 55,000. Okay. Ideally, I do understand that you can get the best mm. out of Afro Park restaurant okay. when you visit us. All right. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Baker Bukenya. Baker Bukenya is uh, head of uh, front office and uh, reservations at Afro Park Hotel here in uh, Muyenga, where we have been uh, doing the morning show live as is the tradition for Friday, easing up a little bit away from the hard knock. Uh, topics, the politics of the day uh, that uh, many times uh, completely takes up people's emotions, others are uh, unable to govern them, especially in light of uh, reports that we are hearing uh, from uh, Soroti East of how the polling transpired uh, yesterday. Of course, just a reminder of that uh, particular incident where police was uh, caught uh, well, <laughs> interesting, I should use the word red-handed, uh, breaking into the uh, home of one of the opposition politicians, Adeke and Ebaju. The politician says that this incident happened at, uh, late in the night, in the dead of the night, and it's one of the incidents that uh, paint a bad picture on uh, the police's way of uh, conduct, especially uh, during electro, uh, electro processes or elections. And this particular by-election came in at a time when, of course, the stakes are high, and uh, the police should be seen to rise above uh, partisanship, especially in uh, the conduct and execution of uh, duty. Just a reminder that NRM's uh, Herbert Edmund uh, uh, Rico is now the MP elect for Soroti East, having garnered 9,407 votes ahead of uh, FDC's uh, Atan Mike, who garnered uh, 8,771 of uh, those votes. Uh, the FDC candidate has dismissed that result and says he's going to consult his party honchos on the next move. The Electoral Commission says everything was okay and that. Uh, well, the elections were free and fair. That will do it for this edition of Morning at NTV. On behalf of my colleague, uh, Regina Priscilla, Priscilla Regina Naloga, not Regina Priscilla Naloga, and of course on my own behalf, and of course the wonderful team behind the scenes that ensures that this is uh, brought to you live and direct uh, from NTV, your number one uh, quality programming station. Of course, uh, many thanks to the team behind the scenes. That's it. Uh,